Hey everybody, it's Jennifer Tonetti Spellman here for the latest edition of Women in Street Stories. I'm here today and thrilled to be with Melissa O'Shaughnessy. Welcome. Hi, so so happy to have Good you. To be here. Great to have you here. Where are we today? Melissa, pick the spot. We are on Doyer Street in Chinatown, um, a tiny little one block Crooked Street where we thought it wouldn't be too noisy for us to speak. Exactly. And when I tell you it's a treasure trove of gifts, here, you picked an amazing, amazing spot. But you know, we were talking a little bit about New York and how lucky we are to have access to all of this. So you originally were born in? In Minneapolis, I'm a Minnesota girl, uh, but have been in the East for 25 years. So now you're here, right? You mm-hmm. kind of divide some time between New York and, and a little bit of the suburban life? Yes, raised my kids in Connecticut, but spent about half my time in the city. Excellent. So what is it about New York um, that influences the way you shoot, like in terms of style or content, etc.? Well, I think just the sheer density of, of, this, of Manhattan itself is, um, drives a lot of what I end up doing. Um, the variety of people, the crowds, it, it's such a bustling city with so much street life uh, that you can go almost anywhere uh, and be rewarded. If you're lucky, right? <laughs> street, street photographer, street photography is all about getting comfortable with failure because yeah. in a year you might get a handful of images that are really great. It really is about the process. Uh, get comfortable with failure, and you'll enjoy yourself. That is that's so true, and I think really it's the only genre that's like that. You know, if you're say for us a wedding photographer or a children's photographer, any other genre, you know you're going to get something which street right. you have no idea no and no. we were just talking too in new york what happens in the winter time with with the light well and, and with the tall buildings in new york there are parts certainly in midtown where i love to shoot uh at this time of year you might get two hours of light on the streets because the height of the buildings and the angle of the sun yes. and people are you know on a cold day people are hunched in their clothing and their heads are down and so the light in the winter when you get it is beautiful but there's not a lot of it so you know you gotta you gotta plan your walk Yes, uh, carefully for sure. And and on that note, favorite places and locations in New York City that are your go-to's Midtown. You just mentioned um, Chinatown. I love because there are so many people on the street all the time. Um, Midtown, Forty Second and Fifth Avenue is a treasure trove uh, in the summertime at, at rush hour. This time of year at rush hour is dark, so. Um, Parades are good at the periphery. I never shoot what's going on in the parade, but the people around it are marvelous. Um, Union Square is great. Uh, Wall Street is wonderful, but not this time of year because it's so dark. Yes. Uh, so it's it's favorite places move through the through the year and where the light is. Mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely. But I think you know Midtown, Manhattan, Fifth Avenue uh, has been a mecca for street photographers for a long time sure and do you venture outside of New York City and go to the boroughs at all I pretty much stay in Manhattan yeah, yeah. And, and, and again it's that battle between that which is familiar because I know I'm so familiar with Manhattan that I know where the light is I know where the people are gonna be at any mm-hmm. given time of year time of day um, but you go somewhere new and, and, and the background is new and the environment is new and that can be stimulating too. I just tend to go out, I live near Union Square, I tend to go out my front door and walk wherever yeah, well, I'm going. So. For those that don't know New York City, Union yeah. Square is also another treasure trove. Downtown in general is, yeah. is really, yeah. there's a lot to, to work with. And um, in terms of other cities that you visited, do you have some compare, contrast? Like, what are your thoughts on other cities in terms of shooting street well, there? London is uh, is delicious. Uh, the buildings are lower, so you get more light. Certainly, you get more rain, but um, you make do. I love London. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think London is one of the great, great street photography cities in the world. Um, Paris can be a little harder. The privacy laws are uh, stricter, I think. You know, I've, get, I've been yelled at in Paris. I was just going to ask how are the people places. in Paris. The people yeah. aren't as, as here in New York, most people don't care. I've had very few problems. If people ask me what I'm doing. I say, oh, I love your manicure. That's a great hat. And you smile. And, and, and people are mostly flattered. Mm-hmm. In Paris, they're not quite so warm about it. Yeah. Um, but it's such a beautiful city. 
you can make them. Absolutely. But I would say London, and I'm dying to go. I've never been to Tokyo. That's on, oh, on my yeah. wish list. <laughs> That'll be good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you kind of touched on this too. If someone was coming to New York to visit, a street photographer, or is someone interested in street, what's one neighborhood you would tell them to absolutely go to? Oh, I think you have to start in Midtown. You have to go to Fifth Avenue. Uh, the stretch between the 40s and the 60s uh, is amazing on a weekend. I mean, there are just so many people, and and the light can be fabulous. Uh, there's just, it's a good place to start. And then mm -hmm. venture forth. I mean, Times Square can be amazing, and it can be hateful. Um, it is, there's a lot going on on a busy weekend. It's too, it, it can give you a terrible headache, but there are gems to be found. Mm -hmm. So I think most New Yorkers will avoid Times Square like the plague. Yeah. Um, but for photographers, it can, I, I venture there every so often. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I regret it, regret it, and sometimes it works like a charm. Right. So That's great. It, it depends on your mood. Mm -hmm. It's not for the faint hearted. No, it's not. <laughs> the only good thing is, too, I feel like Times Square is filled with the tourists a lot of times. Lot of so, you know, you never know what... They are more apt to being okay with you catching them as well, I feel like. Because they're all filming also. So you kind of just blur in, or people think you're a fellow tourist. So right. it's sometimes right. a, a benefit. I, I have, you know, my, my work tends to kind of fall into two categories. Mm -hmm. A very simple, minimalistic, kind of single-person image and then images where I just fill the frame with people. Interesting, and so okay. so when I want to really fill the frame and have, have it be kind of ordered chaos, uh, being on Fifth Avenue, being in Times Square, being in a parade where mm -hmm. they're just, where you can have so many inter people interacting in one frame is wonderful. Yeah. Agreed. Um, but to just shoot tourists shooting pictures. Yeah of themselves is um, gross out of fast. Well, and it, like we said, what else, what else uh, that we have challenges with, too, are the phones that people, you know, so you either have, in Times Square, you got a lot of people taking pictures, and then in New York in general, it's sometimes a struggle to find people that aren't on their phones um, a lot. So, yeah. you know, it's yeah, a challenge. But it, it, it is the streets of our day. It is, it is people are absorbed in their devices, and as challenging as it is for a photographer, interacting with each other and not their phones. It is also indicative of our times. I mean, sometimes you look back at the work of Vivian Meyer or Helen mm -hmm. Levitt or, or Gary Winogrand, and people were interacting more with each other, and we all miss that. Yes, I miss for it. sure. But the reality is we are photographing our times. We're documenting our times in our work. The fashions, the things that are, hap that are the, the, the habits of people, the fashions of people, the things that they do, are of our time, and um, that's what we're after. Right, you can't ignore it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, documenting is documenting, yeah. right? Um, yeah, and then, don't... what does it mean to you, Melissa, to be a woman in street? Outnumbered. Um, I have made many, many friends on popular street corners um, in Manhattan, and almost all of them are men. I mean, it's. It, mm -hmm. it, it is still a genre dominated by men, um, but I love the work that Casey is doing on behalf of all the women who are doing it. I think we're not as, probably as, as good at um, promoting ourselves, as likely to kind of push ourselves out there. Certainly that was the case with me. Mm -hmm. I just joined Instagram this year um, because I wanted, I was working and wanting to make sure that my work was kind of worth seeing, that it was, that I was doing things that I was proud of, that I was reaching beyond cliche, yep. um, and it takes a long time to get there. So I think women, I, I'll speak for myself, I think many women aren't as likely to be as strongly self-promoting in this genre mm -hmm. as men. But I think there are a lot of us out there. And uh, Casey, here's to you, you've done cheers, so much, cheers, uh, <laughs> uh, so much for all of us who mm -hmm. are loving this genre. And, out on the streets. Agree. Agree 100%. Okay, everyone. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thanks. It was really great to be here. Yes, and we are going to hit the streets a little bit now, so stay tuned for some more Women in Street stories coming your way soon.
careful not to be just taking people walking in front of walls. That gets, I've done far too much of it and it gets old fast. So what are you looking for in this case where we do have like the, obviously the green wall, well, but you don't want to be too cliche as you yeah, say, right? Yeah. You know, if there was a nice lineup of, like, we're not getting good shadows. Sometimes you'll get kind of this rhythm of shadows going. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the tree might throw, it, it isn't now, but if the shadow of that tree was like throwing itself over onto the wall, can be beautiful. It's a place to start. It's something to start with and then you build from there. So what part of Chinatown are we in now? Well, we're, on, we're on Canal Street. So, um, try, I mean, it, we're kind of at the northern border of Chinatown, although it grows up a little. Like, but Canal Street is a real, it's, it's so many cheapo souvenir shops and, and people selling knockoff handbags. And it, it's a really kind of, mister. Um, it's really kind of awful sometimes, but <laughs> there's a lot going on. Okay. It's, it's kind of a mess here, but it says God on that pillar. Um, so it's, it's something to place in the frame. talking a little bit about how filming in New York is to the people. And... <laughs> She's so pretty. She is so um, pretty. And she gave me a nice smile. Right. Usually I like not to be noticed, but she had this beautiful red lipstick and a beautiful smile and the light was gorgeous. And most people don't mind. And you know, if, you, if, you, if your body language is not threatening and you smile at people um, and, and try to catch those moments of a nice gesture or beautiful light or a nice intersection of people, um, New Yorkers are really great. It's a, it's a great city for street photography. And you know, I'm not after trying to make people look strange or catch them in uncomfortable, ugly situations. It's the beauty of people. It's the, the beauty of people colliding and, and, and the light hitting faces and, and how interesting people are. Um, and New York is fabulous for that. It's, it's, there's everyone here, every language, every nationality. Obviously, we're in Chinatown, so there are a lot of Chinese, but it's, it's never exclusive. It's, it's, the city is such a melting pot of people, and that is truly its great appeal. Heartbreak of street photography. And I lost her. She is in route in chase mode. There you are. <laughs> I was just yeah, telling everyone, I lost you, you went in yeah. total chase mode. Yeah. What was it you were trying well, to film? No, him? I like it. Oh, he just had a good, you know, hoodie on. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I have triggers. Hoodies, flowers, balloons, shopping bags. <laughs> I mean, there are things that make me stop and say, what can I do with this? 
Um, but I do, I like a subtle image. I like when people are kind of subtly interacting and, and colliding and clashing, but, but without a, a big joke in the middle of it or something, or a strange costume. I mean, a good, interesting, subtle image is, is hard to do.